So to be honest with you, we get hundreds of dollars worth of free merchandise all the time. It's a routine pickup for us when we're outsourcing. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about free items that we got, and we're going to show you a real good example of something here that sold for $175 that I didn't pay a dime for, and that I routinely get and do not pay a dime for. To be honest with you, that sort of deal happens all the time. We will buy a bunch of stuff from somebody. They'll have a junk pile or just some stuff they weren't even going to do anything with, and we'll get it thrown in. Or we'll pull some damaged items up or something they wouldn't get money for to begin with, and we'll be able to get them to throw it in. It happens all the time. I can't tell you how many times it's happened because it just happens so frequently. A couple times a month, at least, we're able to get some real good merchandise for free just for purchasing something else. And even if we don't always get something for free, we're almost always bundling stuff together to get a better deal across the board. The more stuff you buy in places like we go to, the better the deal is. The junkier it looks, the dirtier it is, usually the better the price it is. Those factors aren't always a push away from us. I don't mind having them have issues or anything else like that. I don't mind having to clean something. I don't mind it not being perfect if it's good merchandise. That's the key. It has to be good stuff. So here's the actual sale here. Now I've covered up the person's name with uh, obviously a postie here, but it was only up for a little while. This is an active one right here that just sold. We listed it. It was up for just a couple hours. And as I said, all this is is a piece of paper. And it was given to us for free because we bought some other stuff as well as a bunch of other junk magazines that were all ripped up. None of them had covers. Most of them were missing half the pages. And even the pages that were there had some rips in it. But this piece was not ripped. And as you can see, it's just a chunk from a book, a damaged book at that. So in many cases, these sorts of items can make you hundreds of dollars. Now, this was the only piece I cut out right away. The rest of the magazine's just sitting on a shelf with probably another 100-plus magazines or pamphlets or booklets, just like that one that were given to us. We get free stuff like that all the time. If you buy something, there's a stack of junk. Man, I don't know how many times they've just thrown it in. In some cases, they've even offered before I even had the chance to ask. But there's many other items in this exact same purchase, or giveaway, I should say, in this case, that will sell also. There's probably 40 more just from this one. Not sports-related. This is the best one in there. But still, there's some good money to be made. Right now, we're listing more expensive things that are a little easier easier and we have a, a probably a better range of selling um, so we haven't messed with them yet but one of these days we'll crank them out or have one of the employees yank them out and just sit there and cut the cut them out like you see this one right here and they'll just be listed it'll be a whole bunch of free inventory and it still has the potential to sell as you saw again this is nothing more than a scrap and that's how it's listed. It's a piece of paper, just a scrap from some junk item. And in most cases, if it's a print ad, I don't even show the back of it. But in this case, because of the value of this item, it's selling for 175 bucks plus shipping plus tax, I wanted to give them the full open picture. If you're selling a $15 or $20 or even $50 print ad, for an example, I don't show the back. I I just show just the face and a zoom in on it, and that's it. Now, an interesting fact on this image here, these two images, these are both used on a baseball card. So that's really the, the main aspect on these. There's a name, the artist's name who did these. There's a, a, a specific type of baseball card that these two basic images were used on. Now it's a different version of them. These don't appear as you see it, but the position, the pose, and the, the basic features and facial uh, representation is the same that's on the early pioneer era baseball card. So excellent sale for something we didn't even have to pay for. Now with the baseball scrap, there's more to what that is. If you're unaware of the history of baseball cards, the very first things that they called baseball cards are described as scrap 
in many different guide things, even some sites that I've seen. Now, that isn't a company or anything. Like, you would see Tops as being the maker of it. You would see Scrap in some, some places. Now, that was a term used by someone who messes with Victorian because they're, they're die cuts. The first baseball cards out there are what you would consider the the founding fathers of baseball cards are scraps, which are Victorian die cuts from the 1870s. This is similar, similar artwork. The artwork on this one as well is pretty much a direct takeoff off of some pioneer age baseball cards from the 1870s and 80s. The same basic artwork, just tweaked by color and a little less detail than you see on the cards themselves. Now with this lot, again, we didn't pay for the magazines. We got like 30 different magazines or so, along with the stuff that we paid. Now this first item selling too paid for the entire purchase. Again, we've got around 600 items to sell. Still whack up the magazines, cut them up into pieces and sell all the print ads and many more pieces of scrap. But at the end of the day, I only have 150 into the entire purchase and I'm just messing with the free stuff right now. The better stuff was in the purchase itself. So when I'm out there too, if I'm sorting through records and I buy 100, can you throw these in or this one isn't so great or whatever. You can constantly get a better deal if you wheel and deal when you're out in places like I go to. Thrift stores aren't really the best place to get anything great that I sell. Good stuff at thrift stores if you've got the right thrift store, but for us, that's not the case. Flea market guys are great. Uh, old school stuff, antique flea markets, auctions aren't too bad. State sales aren't so, so bad, but pickers have been the best bet or, you know, going out to specific places and, and stuff like that. So it's a great way to get free stuff. It happens all the time, a couple times a month at least. Sometimes every week we get something thrown in for free. So again, volume helps. Buying from the same people over and over again helps. If we get something good from somebody, we're surely going to go back. They're surely going to give us another deal. Many times again, they'll throw something in at the end of the day. Sometimes they'll ask about something after I've just bought some stuff. How much do you have on that? They'll just throw it in because they don't want to have to do another receipt or anything else like that sometimes. So it doesn't hurt to ask. Asking has found us an untold amount of treasures to resell, treasures for a collection, and on and on and on. If you want to stick around to the very end as well, I've got a little something special, a little behind the scenes opening of something all the way from Japan to our location. So stay tuned after the credits and you'll see something pretty cool. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Okay, so here's a box that came in. This is all the way from Japan. Now, I've removed our obvious label and stuff, but this is a Japanese toy in the box. We're going to see if we can open it while we're shooting this. Hopefully, they took well good care to wrap it up in here. Now, this is vintage. This is from someone we've bought from before. And hopefully, again, it's in good condition. There we go, let's try that. Oh, they taped it pretty well. Now this is a toy shop from Japan. And we've dealt with them probably for two years now. And let's see what we got. Something for the wife. And I think you can already see the Japanese writing on the box. This is a vintage toy from the 1970s with lots of bubble wrap. Of course, we're gonna save all that bubble wrap too, so no sense in uh, wasting it. Boy, they really did tape it pretty well. This is some good tape, I have to say. It's like packing t sealing tape. Let's see if I can get this last one off there. 
we got another one on the side. And there we have it. Now this is an original, I think it's from 78, if I'm not mistaken. It's the Japanese version of the American toy in the box. And again, this is about shelf fresh. Let's see if we can't get it opened. And there we go. Let's make sure we're not messing anything up. Now some of the accessories are even still in the bag. So this is as they were issued. These are the original, and they actually have, if you look at them closely, Japanese characters on the Weebles. So this is a very good set. First and only time I've ever seen this one. We have about, I don't know, a dozen or so other Japanese versions of Weebles toys. Um, this is probably one of the better ones. This one only shows up like once every five years. And that is the box itself. It's an interesting, unique shape. It doesn't match any U.S. boxes. The boat itself, though, is available in another set. It's also in a marina set. There's a European version, which I think is neat, is the name of the boat is actually in Japanese on the boat itself. So this is a licensed product by Hasbro, and the company that made it, I can't tell what the name is because it's all in Japanese. It's, it does have Hasbro International logo there, but still, this is made in Japan by a Japanese maker. It was originally, it looks like 3 yen, which would have been very cheap in the 1970s. So excellent, interesting item. Don't show up here very often. Some cases we import stuff like this, you know, dirt cheap because no one wants to import it. Then once it's here, we're able to sell it. Now, this one's not going to be sold, but we have done that quite a few times in the past where we snagged up something we knew we could sell here and we risked the import to make the profit. So anyway, excellent item here. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on stuff like this. Where you going, Tony? Look at Digger, Matt. Digger the dog, Digger, he goes with you when you explore. Just pull his leash and go for a walk. He's your dog for sure. What's your dog's name? Digger! Digger the dog, Digger, he goes with you when you explore. Just pull his leash and go for a walk. He's your dog for sure. Digger the dog, when you pull his string, he walks five feet from Romper Room.